Hi, Scott Sager with you, RTC TV4. Thanks for joining us this week on 4. We've got some great reports for you, starting out with the Abby Malco Sports Report, where we covered the 8U Town & Country State Finals right here in Rochester. If you missed out, it was a great few days of events there. Rochester and Caston both had representatives in the state finals. In the end, it was Frankfurt in a doubleheader winning over Monticello. But we'll let Abby tell you a little bit more about that. It was a great time. We had a lot of great fans from all over the country tuning in to watch those games. So we've got that coming with Abby. From Brant Gerald, we have a wonderful report from the Wild Rose Moon up in Plymouth. It's a nonprofit organization doing its best to have an open mic night a couple of times a month. Brant's got some great footage from that as well as some details about upcoming events in the community. Finally, we also have Tim Wagner. Tim's talking about some highlights of some city council meetings that have happened lately, as well as uh, some discussion with the Tippecanoe Valley teachers and the new ones that are joining this year. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy This Week on 4 from RTC. Hello and welcome to RTC TV 4 Sports Report. This week we covered the Town & Country Championship game for the 8 and under baseball players. Monticello and Frankfurt were the two teams competing. Monticello came out of the loser's bracket and forced a second game to the undefeated Frankfurt team. Frankfurt ended up winning the championship game. Let's take a look at some highlights and the celebration at the end. Wow, that's a rocket. Yeah, it is. That's a good pitch. Nice cut. That is nice hit. That'll fall. Oh, wow. Nice heads up play. Good job by that, that right fielder. For the second game, because we will have to leave for a minute, switch up some gear, and that is what we're going to have to do because that was out number three, the line drive caught by the first baseman of Monticello. Was it as a trivia question like I did to Tim because you already know the answer. Correct. Hot ball oh, bounces man. over the second baseman and the pass the center fielder. This runner is going to score unless the catcher makes a great tag oh. and he does. But he does not have the ball in his mitt. Wow. Woo. Yes. Oh my, my no gosh. Way. Did that just happen? <laughs> oh my gosh, that was the most incredible <laughs> catch by an eight-year-old I've ever seen I in my life. I think I need to get that clip, send it into Sports <laughs> Center, and that's completely gonna make no the number joke. one play of the night. Diving catch on a line drive that was nose diving to the ground. And honestly, yeah, it wasn't even like a smooth, I'm gonna skid across the ground. That was like, I'm gonna eat some dirt in <laughs> order to sacrifice myself for this catch. This kid has been in that position all night and is like, listen, people, you yeah. have hit it to me and hit it to me. I am getting these. Base. And the ball that bounces past the pitcher's mound is going to make the winning run go across the plate. So that will end the game on the run rule. What a great game by both teams and some very good plays made by some eight and under baseball players. Congratulations to Frankfurt for winning the state championship for the second year in a row. Next up, we will talk to Tina Passion and Bruce Matthijs about the upcoming Fulton 5K Bulldog Run happening on August 5th during Fulton Fun Days. In 1999, um, we had the misfortune of losing my son to a four-wheeler, and he was just a freshman at Caston. Mm -hmm. And the outpour, the young kids from Caston came by, kept in contact, with us for the next three years until yeah. they graduated. But anyway, in 99, we decided to give something back to the community, and so I started a, the, uh, a scholarship in his name through the Northern Indiana Foundation. And Dave Summers, who is probably the man uh, that helped me uh, get everything started in a 5K run, Mm -hmm. uh, he, at that time, he was a cross-country coach, he was a minister, he sell, sold uh, seed, he was a hog, hog farmer. So well-known guy wow. in the community. Definitely. So we started the 5K run and to generate money to give out scholarships mm -hmm. to Gaston, the current senior. And that's how we got started. Yep. It's 17 years later, here I am. and. I've decided uh, this year, the last year was my last year, and I'm going to turn it over to Tina and Blair Zimmerman and uh, Dave Summers and uh, Eric Lee, Lynn. 
So hopefully, and, and I know this is going to go well because Tina's really done a great job in helping uh, go out and get the sponsors. Mm -hmm. So will the same volunteers be passing over with Tina being in charge now? It'll be up to her. Okay, well, <laughs> let's hear from you then and you know, all your plans. Well, Bruce has been wonderful for um, me this year and helping me out get the race started. And uh, we've been... I've been really blessed. I didn't know what to think coming into this, and uh, the sponsors so far have um, been very supportive of the change. Um, like Bruce said, um, I I have been overwhelmed by the sincerity and just the generosity yeah. of people in this community. Not only with donations of money, but um, we have a lot of gifts that people have given to give back to the runners. And That's great. That really means a lot, especially um, the money this year will go to the cross country team. Okay. Um, for the boys and girls and for things that we need um, that the school doesn't necessarily have the money for. Yep. And um, as Bruce put it, Dave uh, Summers will get some of the money back for his Loaves of Love Oh, that's great. Yeah. So give me a little more detail as far as I know that it's on August 5th in Fulton, but as far as all the ins and outs of it, tell me about that. The race will start at 8.30 okay. in the morning. Um, you can still come pre-register if you haven't registered already. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have a limited number of t-shirts available for anyone who is registering late. Uh, we have some uh, music lined up to be playing. Um, Good, that's what music so And we still have, um, you know, the food and drink will be available mm -hmm. afterwards. And uh, Bruce and I have gotten some really nice gifts from the community to come in and share with the runners. And uh, and not just runners, but walkers too. I oh, have okay. a lot of walkers coming. And uh, when I've talked to a lot of people, there's actually a lot of people that like it. It's a very flat course. It's very fast. Good. So We like and any speed and yes. downhill. It, it works for us. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else that either of you would like to add? I, I just want to thank again the community and everybody and, and thank Tina. When I approached the uh, Tina and Dave Summers and Lynn, uh, Derek Lynn, uh, they, uh, we met for breakfast one day and they said, yeah, it would be great to take it over. That's awesome. And I was really, really thrilled. I didn't want it to end. And, you know, Fulton Days has been around uh, for 18 years now. Absolutely, yes. And it's just been a, a really great event. And a mm -hmm. lot of nice people come out to, not only for the race, but for the uh, Fulton County uh, there. So. Yeah. Well, we thank you for all the years that you've put this together and such a great event, too. And thank glad that, that it's able to continue on. Thank you. Yes, good luck, and we will actually be there, too. We'll definitely have a photographer out there getting pictures of all the runners and fun things. So we'll see you at Fulton Fun Days, and make sure you guys register out there for the Fulton Bulldog 5K. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. What a great event put on by Bruce many years ago, and their tradition stays alive. Make sure to stop out at Fulton Fun Days this year to see all the volunteers and even participate in the race. Thank you for tuning in to this week's RTC TV4 Sports Report. We'll see you next time. Well, that was a great report. Again, Abby Malko from RTC reporting there. We look forward to more great stories from her on This Week on 4. Next up, we've got Brant Gerald from the Wild Rose Moon. Let's take a look. Welcome to Tending to Art. This week, we went to the Wild Rose Moon in Plymouth to check out their open mic night. We saw a variety of acts, including some instruments you normally don't see at such an event. Let's take a look. Say this, lady. 
Here come the thunder and the lightning that she could have held my hand. She would have called my name. Too young to remember, I miss her the same. My guardian angel, I miss her the same. Ever since, get off of that couch. You don't cost me nothing when he wants to go out. I want you to love me like my dog does, baby. When I come home, I want you to just go crazy. <laughs> Someplace near Milwaukee <laughs> on a rainy cold November Wild Rose Moon has open mic night every first and third Wednesday of each month, along with other performance-based events throughout the month. You can find out more by visiting their website at wildrosemoon.com. Now let's take a look at some of the events happening in the area. Okay, what a great report by Brant right there. Next up, we've got uh, Tim Wagner. Tim is uh, kind of our communities edition person. Tim's going around and uh, talking to all the great folks in this community about the things happening. In this segment, you're going to see a little bit of a recap of the city council meeting from Rochester, as well as interviews from new teachers over at Tippecanoe New Valley Schools. Let's take a look. I'm Tim Wagner with RTC TV4, and this is your Regional Roundup. Big things coming to the Bailey's building? A group of local investors say yes. Although the plans are still in their infancy, the group hopes to breathe life into the iconic Rochester property and join in on a multifaceted plan to revitalize downtown. Um, These are the investors? Right? The investors revitalizers. That's what we call them. So um, there is one other inv individual who is not here at the moment. Um, who is going to potentially put a, a large amount of money into the project. Um, those details haven't been confirmed um, at the moment. 
there's negotiation going on. So Are you guys doing this for beer? <laughs> uh, if you don't, a lot of if work you, here, isn't there? A lot of work. yeah, um, yeah. I wish we could have brought beer to taste because I have not tasted beer that has been more of this for our community. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. Rochester needs some help, but we need to find a way to bring people to our community. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I applaud you for that. But, uh, this week saw the end of July, and for many families, an end to summer. That's right, school will begin this week. I sat down with some fresh faces at Tippecanoe Valley and discussed the coming school year. Rebecca Parker. And we're going to be asking some questions of all the new teachers today. And first off, why did you... What is it? I gotta have the question. Why did you become a teacher? Um, I wanted to have a positive impact on students' lives. I had a lot of really good teachers growing up, and um, you know they had they had a good impact on me. And I wanted to kind of give back and do the same. So you're just paying it forward, kind of. Yeah, and and uh, coming back to this community, I graduated from Valley. I I really wanted to give back to what I felt was um, a huge part of the person that I am today. Oh, awesome. Um, what will you do to make a difference at Tippecanoe Valley? Um, teaching PE and health. I really want to motivate students to um, want to live a healthy lifestyle um, and just kind of empower them to know if they work hard and uh, they invest in, in the right things that good things will happen. Do you find that's ever a problem with kids or they genuinely receive the message? Um, no, it's always a challenge. It's always a challenge, but you know, being uh, creative and finding different ways to to figure out how what makes them tick is is kind of the rewarding part of it. To kind of get them excited about the idea. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Now I'm sitting down with Dusty Sweet. All right. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Why did you become a teacher? I love interacting with students and learning their personalities and helping them realize what their interests are. That really gets you up every day, doesn't it? It does, yes. Um, what will you do to make a difference here at Tippy Valley? I hope to be a good role model and make a positive influence in their lives and help guide them to reach their goals and then develop more goals. How long have you taught? Uh, this is my first year teaching but i've been a para for the corporation for over five years so you've been around already so. yes great awesome well thank you so much thank you sitting here with sarah huff well miss huff why did you become a teacher i became a teacher because i've always had a passion to inspire others and my dad was a teacher for oh almost 20 years now and he always showed me that you can inspire others and equip others by um, being a mentor and a safe person in the classroom. 20 years here? No, I'm from Ohio. Ah. Um, so way back in Lorain, Ohio is where he's been teaching. Way back. <laughs> it's like four and a half, almost five hours away. Okay, whereabouts, I have to ask. Um, big city-wise, Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah, that's over there. Um, <laughs> What will you do to make a difference here at uh, Tippecanoe Valley? At Tippecanoe Valley, I really hope that I can make an impact by, once again, inspiring my students specifically. Um, I'm a third grade teacher, so I get them when they're still young um, and still really able to mold them and shape them and inspire them that they can chase after whatever dream that they want to by equipping them with the tools that they're going to need to pursue those dreams. They're still very enthusiastic at that age. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yeah. It's hard yeah. to get them down right. um, when they're enthusiastic. Right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Sent down here with Brian Raber. Brian Raber, good morning. Good morning. Uh, why did you become a teacher? Um, uh, four years ago, I did a serious reevaluation of my career and went back to school to be a teacher. Very good. That's uh, what what'd you do before? I worked in law enforcement. I was a jail officer. Oh, very good. Uh, what will you do to make a difference here at Tippecanoe Valley? Uh, I just want to bring uh, my passion for social studies and uh, be somebody that the kids enjoy to have in class and come to my class to uh, learn history and social studies. So you feeling confident about uh, the coming year? I think so. Uh, it'll be my first year back up here, but I uh, went to North Carolina for a year. But I'm glad to be back up here in Indiana and part of the Valley community. You're going to experience weather again. Ah, that's okay. Yeah. I grew up here, so it's not too bad. You know what you're in for. Right. right. Thank you so much. Thank you.
So I'm sitting down now with... Cheryl Huff. Okay, Cheryl, why did you become a teacher? Well, um, I guess it started in seventh grade, and um, I had a really excellent science teacher, mm -hmm. and we got to do all the great things that all science people want to do, you know. had We had animals in the classroom, and we dissected things in seventh grade, and I would, it's like you'd never really had science, science classes before. Oh, yeah. It always kind of relates to health and those kind of things, and um, so that was, got me really excited about science. And um, she made a real impression on my life. And I had a couple of other high school teachers that really supported me and, you know, were very encouraging uh, in the classroom. And, like, I played volleyball in high school, so they were supportive in that way also. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make that difference for somebody else that they had made for me. So you got that bug early, it sounds like. I, I did. And then I really kind of changed my mind. I thought, no, no, no. I mean, because I was only in seventh grade, right? Right, yeah. Um, but then when I went to college and I started taking some other classes, and I'm like, this is not it. I want to be a teacher. So Sometimes it's as simple as that, isn't it? Uh, what will you do here at Tippecanoe Valley to make a difference? Well, I think it's important uh, that I make some good relationships with the students and encourage them uh, in whatever they want to go into. Mm -hmm. Because not everybody has to go to college and right. do something like that. So... I find out what they're interested in and hopefully make a connection uh, with them in that way. Well, you have a, uh, you have high hopes for this year, you think? You think it's going to be a good year? I believe truly that everybody is good at something yeah. and that we'll find out what that is ah. together and that we'll capitalize on that. Yeah, good. it'll be good. Well, you have a good year. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm sitting down with Andrew Murphy. Mr. Murphy, why did you become a teacher, Mr. Murphy? I became a teacher to uh, better the lives of students, make a positive impact on my community, and uh, hope for a brighter future. Have you taught prior to this, or is this your first round? Uh, the last, second half of last year, I did a maternity leave at Akron Elementary. So prior to that, though, no. So you're, you're new to the game here. <laughs> yeah, it's fair to say I'm pretty new. Okay. What difference will you make here at Tippecanoe Valley? Uh, my goal is to help equip students with the knowledge and the know-how they need to be productive members of society, whether that's going to college or, or uh, learning a trade. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us. Thank you. And now I'm sitting here with... Genoveva Ramirez. I won't do anything with that name, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why did you become a teacher? Um, I became a teacher because uh, my French teacher's enthusiasm just opened my eyes to a whole new world, and a new culture, and really installed in me, in me a real appreciation for the French language. I've seen personally the benefits of being bilingual, and I want to help my students get there as well. So will that make you trilingual then? Yes, uh, three languages, trilingual. Oh, very <laughs> nice, very nice. I think I know someone who's learning French right now. Any tips for them? Yes, watch a lot of French movies and music. That is the best way to learn the language. Mm -hmm. well, thank you so much. What will you do to make a difference here at Tippecanoe Valley? Um, I want to help my students gain an appreciation for diversity um, and also just install in them dreams and goals. Uh, perhaps living in a small town Indiana, sometimes we don't really get out of sure. the four walls of our classroom. But um, just install in them that if they learn Spanish, they can go to Spain one day. If they learn French, they can go to France one day. Uh, it happened to me personally, and I know it's an experience I will never forget. And they should be encouraged to do so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Thank you. Well, another great segment from one of our producers here at RTC. I want to thank you for watching This Week on 4. We'll be back next week with more updates and highlights. We thank you for joining us here on RTC Channel 4 and encourage you to look for us on the web at rtc4.com. See for yourself. We'll see you next time.